just have a look in the mirror and mm -hmm. tell me what you're looking at, what your concerns are and yeah. what you think you'd like to sort of, you know, have fixed. Yeah. I noticed, and I was really looking at it today, that what I thought were freckles are probably not freckles. I've got like this kind of these dark patches here. Pigmentation. And I know I've got this scarring here, mm -hmm. which seems to be getting worse over the years, which I don't know what can get rid of that. And then as I'm getting older, I get these occasional hairs here and I've been picking at them and which has caused scarring under my chin as well. Okay. So those are my main scarring. concerns. Yeah. yeah. Okay, so it's mainly pigmentation and scarring. Yeah. Yeah? Yeah. And like if I get a spot now, whereas in the past I'd get a spot and I'd maybe squeeze it and it would go. Now it seems to be scarring more mm -hmm. than it used mm -hmm. to before. Mm -hmm. And maybe that's age related, I don't know. No, I, yeah, I think so. The skin's changed. The skin does slow down its, its activity as we get older, and uh, you tend to find that where before it was sorting itself out, now it's not able to. Mm -hmm. Whatever you have, whether it's sluggish skin, dead skin, just hangs around. Yeah. Um, what I recommend personally for you is like if I can show you what I think. Mm -hmm. So you've got the pigmentation here. Yeah. Yeah. That, that to me is what I can see, mm -hmm. but beyond that, I'm, still, I'm looking at a really dull skin, skin that actually is not aging, mm -hmm. because you know, I'd expect to see a, a few more wrinkles there, you haven't got many wrinkles at all, um, but my main thing is your skin's very dry, because mm -hmm. I can see the lines here, see the lines here, Yeah. Um, it's dry, it's got pigmentation, it's got almost like uneven skin tone, mm -hmm. so you've got yeah. lightened up patches. Yeah. So my thing would be to actually, first of all, get your skin looking good. Yeah. Right, bright, stimulate the skin to work better, mm -hmm. right? So my first point of call would be, let's do a derma roller, derma pen treatment, where we can stimulate the skin, make it sort of, you know, work better for you, yeah. right? Secondly, derma pen isn't gonna sort out your pigmentation. No. Okay, so, and, and to be honest, if I was to over needle your skin, I'd make that worse. Right. right? Yeah. So if I was to do a, maybe four or five treatments in a course, I don't think I'd be helping your pigmentation at all. Okay. okay. So this treatment, let me stimulate it with this, yeah. and then afterwards, I probably want to do something like mesotherapy, where I'm actually injecting hyaluronic acid and succinic acid to break up the pigment clusters that you've got. Mm -hmm. And I probably would want to do three or four treatments of that, mm -hmm. just to break that up, yeah. and then maybe get you on a home maintenance, okay. where you're actually managing your pigmentation. Yeah. Um, it's okay for me to tell you where to some block, mm -hmm. but there's more than that you need to do. Yeah? yeah. Are you okay with that? Yeah. 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 Okay. So if I start you, we do like a regime. Mm -hmm. The regime being this is the first treatment you have, yes. and then get you back maybe probably after four weeks once the skin's settled, mm -hmm. and then we can just really work this stubborn pigmentation. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Okay. What I'll be doing for you is this today. Um, I'm going to clean your skin. Yeah. Put Emla on for maybe ten minutes, and then do the needling. Now the needling is a little bit sort of you know, I I wouldn't say it's not painful, mm -hmm. but I wouldn't say it's so painful you're going to run off. No. Yeah. I've got so a high pain threshold. You have. Okay. So expect some level of pain, mm -hmm. and then the skin's going to be quite red afterwards. Okay. Okay. So That's all right. <laughs> it's going to probably last about twenty four hours. Okay. At the max. That's fine. Yeah. Yep. Okay. Come yep. On. So, uh, for the derma roller and derma pen treatments, we just need this trolley set up. Uh, warm water with sponges, uh, with the gauze, two of these gauzes. Um, one cleanser, one prep lotion. Uh, then we need the serums, uh, red alert serum and retinol serum from Medicaid. And the th one of the three peels, okay? Uh, then we need a brush. I'm going to do both um, demo the derma roller treatment and the derma pen treatment. So I need a needle for derma pen, some Emla, and anything that you work with when you're needling, it's better that it's actually on a silver tray um, because it doesn't hold the uh, bacteria as much as a plastic one would. Then we need one of these for the peel and a brush, tissues, and that's it. And I think before we start, I actually like to dampen a few of these and put them on a tray so that you're ready. Just put them on a tray, lined up, in case you need to clean um, 
and also it's good for the toner a dustbin and a sharps bin and a led lamp so now the reason that i've set everything up and it's actually just on this trolley is because I don't want to have to be getting up when my client is on the bed going in and out looking for um, any of this actually so the treatment if you want it to be professional no phone in the room and everything that you need on a trolley by your side nothing where you're going to have to get up I've even got two bowls of water um, and really the client's treatment shouldn't be disturbed and you shouldn't really keep going in and out of treatment at all to do with the needle uh, the first thing that um, you need to do is get your apron on. This protects you and the client. And it should all be disposable. Everything that we use in the needling treatment is disposable. Um, then I've got the gloves. And before you put the gloves on, there's a gel we use. And these, actually, I quite like these. Are you allergic to latex at all? No. Okay. I quite like these because when you're doing facials, they're really snug. But just make sure your client's not allergic to latex. I've obviously got the other ones as well, should I need to use them. These I like for facials because they give you a better fit. You know, it's just nice fit and the clients don't feel like, you know, you've got these gloves on you. And much as I don't want to ruin my lipstick, <laughs> this is a must. Okay, so I'm going to cleanse the skin with a, a, cleanse, a salicylic cleansing milk. It's really important to use one that's salicylic acid based because it will really clean out the pores, it will clean out the dirt from the skin and it's pH balanced. So you're not going to take her acid mantle down before you even start this treatment. It will maintain the acid mantle while it's going to clean the skin thoroughly and you can clean the eye makeup with it lipstick with it anything really because it's like a a treatment that's not very um how should i put it relaxing i tend to really put the relaxation into the cleansing routine and before i start the needling Okay, take about two or three pumps of the cleanser, put it over your hands, complete hands, apply the cleanser first of all to the jaw area, take it up the nose and then come round the eye contour and then go into the neck. So your cleanser is actually applied everywhere and then you can start working with it and if it starts to run out take a little bit of water because it's water soluble so and it will go a longer way. Start off with the chin, circular movements to the jaw and cleansing should be done mainly in a circular movement because you're not doing a massage, you're cleansing so you want to get the dirt out of the pores and use your fingers when you're going into smaller areas because you can't go in with your um, entire hand four fingers on the cheeks because it's a bigger area and one thumb and two fingers here, one finger into my smaller area, one finger into the nose and see how they just glide. It just goes in and each movement just links up. There shouldn't be a break, break coming back to the jaw area. You notice my movement are changing now because I've loosened up. I've loosened up all the dirt grime and I've got a little bit of water in my hand and I'm going to glide better now. 
This is my second phase of the cleanse where I'm actually giving my whole hand. Circular movements, circular movements, three and then stop and come off. To remove, I'm always using the same movements to remove. Okay, always start off with the neck, alternate hand sweeps. Take one hand following the other on one jaw. This hand stays here, this hand comes to the other side. One hand following the other and it's one movement. Eye contour. Turn them over. Always pressure on the uh, temples before you finish. Now take a little bit of cleanser and mix the cleanser into two pads. One pad you're going to use over the eyes and the other pad you're going to use on the lips. So keep the one for the eyes on the eyes while you carry on with the lip. Okay, there you go. Take one goes to the lower lip, the, another one goes to the upper lip, lower lip, upper lip, lower lip, upper lip. And if she's got lots of lipstick, get a cotton bud with cleanser in it, circular movement, right? And then loosen it all up and then do this. And if she's got lipstick, obviously turn it over and take the second cotton pad if you need to. Now with the eyes, take one eye at a time. She hasn't got any uh, mascara or anything at all, but obviously it's still important to cleanse the eye area. You've done that, now put it into um, a smaller piece and go under the eye and come out. Under the eye and look, I'm supporting her eye. Yeah, make sure whenever you're on the eye area, you're completely supporting, otherwise you give her more wrinkles. So the next step after the cleanse is this, uh, it's a toner, but it's like actually a skin prep lotion with salicylic acid. What this is going to do is it's going to remove the residue of cleanser and it's going to take the pH of the skin to normal. I'm going to start off with the chin area first, chin, jaw, and you notice I'm actually just working together. Both my hands are working. Contour the eye area. Once you've done that, go on to the neck and change the cotton pad if you need to. You know, if I find there's loads of dirt on it, I'm going to change it. But if it isn't, I'm okay with it. And make sure that you're cleaning from around difficult areas like the nostrils. There shouldn't be anything left on the skin at all. Okay, so you get a tissue and I obviously work with um, a single the tissues so one tissue I'm going to use for toning now and if I needed to do extractions I'm going to use this other tissue for extraction okay so this one goes back into my trolley so now that I've done the cleansing I can now see her skin properly okay so I'm going to just take a before and after picture to show her and, my, and it's good for me as well you actually clean your hands with an antiseptic before you put your gloves on. So now when analysing the skin, what you're looking for is pigmentation, dry skin, dehydration, clogged pores, uneven skin tone. Um, and then you're going to decide what products you use after that. So I can see she's got really fine lines here and that's really caused by dehydration. And then there's pigmentation here. So I would say with the pigmentation, definitely need to get that with mesotherapy. And there's uneven tone here. So there's a light and dark patches here. Her pores, not too bad. She hasn't got large open pores and doesn't need a lot of extraction. So I'm not gonna waste my time on that. So what I'm going to use is basically on the pigmentation area, 
I'm going to use the whitening peel and obviously it's going to help the uneven tone as well and the serum that I'm going to use the two different serums I'm going to use well, I'm going to use retinol for um, sort of you know lines and dehydrated areas and for areas that I want to sort of you know bring even tone on vitamin C so vitamin C and retinol really work well together so I can use both in my treatment so how would I choose whether to use derma rollers or derma pen if she's got um, if she's got a lot of indents in the skin if she if the skin really needs working stimulating then I'm going to use the derma pen derma pen goes deeper and if I want to penetrate my serums and I really want the serums to do a lot of work and I just want the skin to just have almost like junctions in the skin where my serums can go through then I'm going to use derma rollers. Derma roller is very good for penetrating serums through the skin and derma pen is going to needle your skin, it's going to remodel your skin. So very different really uh, reasons why you would use that. Okay, so now I'm going to put the Emla on. Take Take about this much emla, maybe maybe a less than a quarter tube um, of emla on my hand, and then I'll see how that goes. I start from the chin and I work my way up, and I'm actually going out. If you can see, I'm going outwards. I'm not going down, and I'm following a routine which is every single product i apply this is my routine people like to leave emla on for like you know you hear about this you know put cling film on leave it on for 45 minutes but not really necessary because you know if the, the client's skin is warm so you know it's, it's going to activate quite quickly so i think there's no need to you know put a lot of cling film and stuff and i've noticed that if you leave the emla for as long as 45 minutes which is what they're recommending it's almost gone it's going to take you at least an hour to go through the whole process so you need the emla to be sort of working for you um it depends there's a trick to emla if the skin is really warm you're going to find it activates quickly and areas that are warm activate really quickly so for example if you do emla on lips because it's like a really warm area it only takes seven minutes for the emla to take on the lips so never think that being 20 minutes 25 minutes is gone so you need to really be quick with it whereas this this way 10 minutes is more than fine and another trick that really helps the emla is if you massage it in once you've applied it that tends to really help get it into the um, into the skin at this point i'm probably going to just go and wash my bowl and uh, prepare for the treatment itself so i've got the uh, derma roller in a container and i'm going to keep it in here as well at all points so i'm just going to open it out and as i'm using it it's coming back in here remove them now with fresh water apply the serum now I'm going to use the retinol serum to begin with um, before you apply it make sure the eyes have a cotton pad in case she opens her eyes and you're about to put this in okay so I'm only going to apply serum to this area one two three four five one two three four five one, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four. So you're going to work one, two, up to up, up to this point, yeah, in one direction. And when you start to see a bit of redness, then crisscross, then go in the other direction, on the area that you worked only. Put your tongue there for me. So get the clients to sort of, you know, put the tongue there when you're working around the mouth area. Make sure you don't catch the lip area. 
And look, stretch with the two fingers like that. So there's a spot here she's got. I'm gonna break that spot. Okay, I'm gonna stretch that and just break the spot. What you're doing here is you're encouraging the skin to heal, you're bringing the blood and all the supply to it. It's gonna really, really help to, to rejuvenate. And the marks are not gonna last more than a few days. Normally they could hang around for weeks. So the work on the skin should be even. You can see here, I need to go back. Stretch the eye area down. And just go lighter. So you should be able to use you should be able to use the derma rollers at different strengths. This is like you're using 2.0, so you're really going in with 2.0. Here, you're lightening your pressure and making sure that it's about probably 1.0 under the eyes. And on the forehead, again, really lightening your pressure, so it's like 0.5. So for the derma pen, I'm going to keep adjusting this. It's up to two point. It's up to three point zero. So I want about two two point zero on the um, cheeks, around the eye contour, probably one point zero, and um, the forehead is a really bony area. So I would probably do point five on the forehead. So I'm always going to keep adjusting it. Yeah. And this one's got twelve needles. You know, you can get nine needles, twelve needles, thirty six needles. The reason I like 12 is that I need space actually to create my junctions and I find that the 36, 36 needles is too close together to create the junctions for me so I don't think it's that effective and 9 is not that many needles so you, the best result I've had is working with 12 needles Okay, and that's the one I've used for a long long time. Okay, And the speed that you want is actually quite high speed. But for the client, at this point, they start to think, okay, <laughs> but it's fine. It's, it's not any more painful than this. I'm going to put the serum on this side. Notice I've got the iPad on because when I'm dropping my serum like this, I don't want to have a risk of um, the serum going into her eyes because you just never know that client just might open her eye. If you want to do um, deep work, then what you go, what you want to do is go like this. If you want to do, do acne scarring, wrinkles, then your movements like this. But if you want to do reju rejuvenation of the skin, then you're gliding a little bit, yeah. So I'm going to show you how to do both. Now I'm working in one area until I get my redness, and you don't really need to stretch for this one. Like at derma rollers, you need to stretch, but with this one, you don't really need to stretch the skin that much. I want to just create. This is for working acne scarring, indents, thicker skin. And if you want to rejuvenate the skin, you can move it. When you're gliding Dermapen in the skin, it should be small movements never large movements if you've got any problem areas where you want to work deeper then do these movements the eye area don't drag the derma roller um, the um, derma pen what you want to do is make sure that you reduce your needle to 0 0.5 0 0.5 and just do it lightly It's actually quite good for wrinkles around the eye area. To over needle the areas where she's actually got pigmentation, you in fact want to very very lightly do areas for pigment because it can needling can make pigmentation worse if you're not careful. So I, I just want to cover the area and put my serums into it, but I certainly don't want to um, I don't want to put um, almost like oh, around here and here she's got a lot of pigmentation 
just lightly um, enough to create junctions where you're transporting the serum into the um, melanin cluster which is actually causing the mark and the serum that I would use on uh, the pigmentation marks would be glucotyanin and vitamin C very very good to put that in so with the forehead it no more than two minutes work as soon as you hit one you're getting the you're getting the spotting yeah so it's like very very quick treatment on the forehead it's taken me literally half a minute to get that result on the forehead right and I'm actually on 0.5 it doesn't take much to to get the forehead sort of you know really working and the nose again derma pen is really good for the nose rather than um, derma rollers because you know you can just get in and it doesn't take more than like half a minute on the whole of the nose and she isn't gonna stand for any longer and I'm not doing much work on the lip at all I'm just covering it very very quick on 0.5 so I've got 0 0.5 under here 0 0.5 0 0.5 to customize my peels so now I've broken into the skin and created it junctions in the skin I can now deliver my peels so much better so where she's got the pigmentation I'm going to use the revival um, whitening peel it's got lactic acid in and it has got glucotinin in to just help the uh, pigmentation breakdown again keep the eyes closed and it will sting for about half a minute and warn the client it's just going to be a little bit hot and a little bit stingy just one little drop apply one drop two drop i got there apply and it's going to really sting and leave it yeah and the reason that we apply the peel after derma rolling is because we've created like openings in the skin and it really pushes the peel where it needs to be so the, uh, the um, pigmentation peel is actually going to go down into the melanin structure and break down the pigment uh, much more effective otherwise normally when, I, when you're putting the peel on it's on the epidermis what is it doing not much so you literally need to get that product in through the skin into the dermal layer for it to actually work and that's why using peels after needling is amazing it will actually get you results and even serums you know at this point if you didn't want to use the peel put a load of serum into it because the skin will just just absorb it down much much better way of working and then with your cold water you're going to seal it down so this is the best time to actually put whatever you want to put into the skin this is the time to actually put it and I wait until she says it's actually zero because then my peel has stopped working Okay, and it will get it to that within, I reckon, about a minute, minute and a half. But in the meantime, I'm going to get change my bowl and get chilled water because that's my final treatment. Look at the white bits, yeah? If you look at the white bits around our eye area, which is where I haven't got, this is how far you should um, needle to, okay? No further than this. And when you're needling there, you, you're, you're almost like pushing the skin down and that's your furthest point you're going to do. And you notice I've left... The white bits are here I don't want to go in there and needle okay that just leave that well alone and here it's too bony for me to sort of needle leave it so I've done it on the soft tissue here and very close to the lip I haven't gone because there's a chance of you cutting into her lip so leave that alone so the safe areas where you see the white is actually my safe areas okay even here it you could it's just you're hitting the bone and the, you see, I've left this. You're hitting the bone. There's no need for that. Yeah, there's nothing, nothing to achieve by doing this. And you just need to be safe. So my safety zone is here. Also, if you look at the forehead, I've gone very close to the eyebrow. But when it comes to here with the hairline, I haven't gone that close to the hairline. I've left, left the uh, area surrounding the hair. Nothing to achieve. Nothing to gain there. Okay, and it's going to come into her hair. Look, she's got all the hairs there. So I don't want to get tangled up with her hairs. And it should be, if where I've worked, it should be very smooth. There shouldn't be any white bits there. No, there shouldn't be any lines. If you've done the rollers or uh, dumb up and not correctly, you'll have like track marks, right? Even if you do, I did more rollers here. So it's very, very smooth. There's no track marks of where my rollers are because I've gone in two directions. I've done crisscross that way once. 
you know, a few times and then the other way. That way you don't get any crisscross and you cover the area thoroughly. Okay, so now I'm just going to take off. <coughs> I'm just going to take off. And when you take off, when you finish, what's the pain like now? Probably two, one, one or two. One or two, I'm mm -hmm. happy with that. Okay, so now this is really cold compress. And how does the cold compress feel? Very good. <laughs> <laughs> this is the best part of the treatment for the client. Yeah, and watch where my hands are. My hands are actually staying, supporting, right, up until I feel the warmth. As soon as I feel the warmth, I take it away, put the pads on like this, put your hands on it and just keep it there. It's so nice for the client. Okay, so now the hottest, hottest areas are usually the cheeks because you literally needle the cheeks a lot more than any other area so that becomes the most sensitive area the area that um, you need to calm the most okay and then one one more thing that's going to really help me to calm her skin and rejuvenate it further is the led light so i'm going to now put the led light on for her it's very relaxing and it will help to calm that redness down but more than that it's going to really rejuvenate her skin and give a double effect to what you've just done so and I would just put it on for probably seven to ten minutes I wouldn't put it on for a lot longer than that you don't need to and in the meantime you can just clear up your station and um, get ready to close the treatment down so the rollers go in the sharp spin and see. so at the end of the treatment we get this cleanser, it's our alcohol based cleanser and we just clean down the derma pen. This is not just makeup, it's actually an aftercare cream that we use for after needling procedures, Botox fillers, mesotherapy, derma roller, derma pen and what it's going to do is it's going to heal the skin more than that it's going to cover up and it has an SPF 50 so she's completely protected after she leaves you. Um, don't do, don't do this with cotton bud because it soaks it all up. So take a little bit. I think I have to take maybe a couple um, of different colours. So now that redness will actually last maybe 24 hours, maybe today, and some. To sit the clients up after the end of the treatment and when I sit them up I've actually got them they're going nowhere um, so at that point I'll start off with giving them aftercare advice and really aftercare advice and then we'll say to them actually I think you'll benefit from this many treatments this is why and um, products as well at this, this point I'll bring in I think you should use these products because she needs to help me achieve the results and I can only do that if she helps me by using the products at home and having a regime that works with what I do in the treatment room. Sometimes it's gone in a couple of hours, sometimes it's there for the rest of the day mm -hmm. and in worst cases it can go on to next day okay. but nothing for you to worry about at all. No. If it feels hot, put cold compress on it yeah. but otherwise... That was really soothing when you put the cold compress was on it? That was really, really nice. Yeah. Perfect, okay. Um, so I think for 24 hours, just manage the red redness, you know, mm -hmm. manage the heat. Cold, sometimes it's gone in a couple of hours, sometimes it's there for the rest of the day. Mm -hmm. And in worst cases, it can go on to next day, okay. but nothing for you to worry about at all. No. If it feels hot, put cold compress on it, yeah. but otherwise... That was really soothing when you put the cold compress was on it. That was really, really nice. Yeah. Perfect, okay. Um, so I think for 24 hours, just manage the red redness, you know, manage the heat, cold compress aloe vera gel if you need to, otherwise leave it well alone. Yeah. After about two to three days, what happens is the skin goes a little bit tight mm -hmm. and it starts to shed after a few days. So you might find it's a bit tight and it's a bit flaky, mm -hmm. right? And that's the skin's renewal process really okay, kicking yeah. in. So don't think, oh my God, I had a dermal roller and my skin's really dry and flaky. Yeah. It's meant to be, okay. right? So that's about three days. After about four or five days, you start to see it when all that peel, peels off, flakes off, 
the skin then starts to feel really smooth and that's when you see the effect of it yeah. so after i say about four to seven days is when you actually really start to see the effect of this okay so right off the next four or five days if concerned then you can call me yeah yeah sure um is there anything i need to avoid like yeah um, yeah hot baths i don't know sauna things stuff yeah. like that any form of heat extreme heat sauna yeah. sunbeds anything like that avoid for 48 hours okay. while the or 48 maybe 72 hours to the, until your skin's calm yeah. and you feel like yeah the shedding's happen it's feeling okay it doesn't feel sensitive after that you can resume your normal activities okay and that that could be your internal process you know at mine same day it's fine i feel that you know everything's gone down it's not that sensitive mm -hmm. but some people last one two three days so whatever that process is manage any sort of you know aftercare until mm -hmm. that period yeah and afterwards i think what you should do is use because we've really made junctions in the skin what really works is serums okay right if you continue to pump your skin with serums after this has been done you'll find that the serums are much more effective right and the ones i recommend for your skin is vitamin c mm -hmm. hyaluronic acid and a serum called glucotyrin right okay. and that's really good to break down this this yeah. pigment can i get that from you yeah because yeah. I was going to ask, should, should I use my normal um, skincare routine or I need to? Use no, I think different? because what yeah. we want to do is we want to work together. Yeah. Right. So okay. if you move on to that, then I, I, you're not helping me. No. So what needs to happen is we need to work together. I do your skincare treatments yeah. and you help me out at home. Yeah. Right. Okay. So in between the treatments, that's when it's really powerful. So what you do is much more powerful at times than what I'm doing. Yeah. Because you're doing it for like 30 days, I'm doing it for one day. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So definitely I would say anything that doesn't have active ingredients in it, mm -hmm. give it to your husband. Yeah. <laughs> Just, you know, it's almost like you can't be because you've got yeah. a problem, you've got yeah. pigmentation that we need to work on. Yeah. Right. So for anything that's going to almost like stimulate your skin, make it work better, um, then we need to do that. Okay. I reckon probably next treatment in three weeks time, if we can maybe do like a mesotherapy, okay. just start working into the pigment. Definite sunblock all the time, SPF 50. Okay, yeah. Right? Even when you're going out, maybe apply a couple of times. Um, don't do o over exfoliating treatments. I don't recommend uh, peels for you. No. Right. So don't don't take any more layers off than you can afford to lose because it makes the skin worse. Okay. So I don't recommend chemical peels that really um, take your layers off. Not for you. Right. I I recommend things that you can actually. Um, pump your skin with vitamins, antioxidants. You need a lot of antioxidants in there. Right. Um, that vitamin C is an antioxidant. Um, really, really good. Citric acids are all antioxidants. Mm -hmm. So pump your skin with that, and then we find that you know we're, we're progressing, we're working. And I don't even recommend laser treatments for pigmentation for oh, you. Oh, really? Not for you. Mm -hmm. Yeah? 